Hello and welcome to another Webcam Wednesday, which are the one take videos that I take on Wednesday mornings because I don't have time to do anything else via a webcam. Now I've just started a group on Facebook, which incidentally you're free to join if you want, uh, called Dreams, which is where people recount their dreams. And this made me think of the question of whether dreams are actually experiences. Dreams not being experiences <clears throat> are something that Daniel Dennett suggests as part of his general theory, physicalist theory of consciousness. The idea is that when you wake up, you have a load of false memories uh, or you have basically junk in your head, which your wakeful mind then imposes meaning on. So you appear to have had experiences, but in fact, those are memories rather than experiences. And I have a fair amount of sympathy with that idea, but I don't think it means that dreams are not experiences. Um, but I just want to discuss the whole thing generally. Um, Norman Malcolm was the first person to suggest that dreams were not experiences as far as I know. And he bases his argument on Wittgenstein's idea that the meaning of a statement is determined by its use. So if a claim can't be verified or falsified, it's meaningless, which is obviously the verification principle and all that stuff. So the received opinion and common sense suggests that dreaming is mental activity during sleep and the problem that Norman Malcolm has with that is that while one is asleep, one cannot assert that one is asleep. This appears to be false, of course, because of lucid dreaming. So you can say for lucid dreaming that dream, lucid dreaming is about dreaming, that you realise that you are dreaming, and then dreaming that you can affect the course of your dreams. Um, and um, this is where it becomes silly, because I think that's very far from your experience, and it sort of suggests when is there actual consciousness? Because you could be doing that all the time, but clearly we do know that there is consciousness. Um, so I'm a bit distracted by the flickering of this screen. I don't know what that's going to do. Anyway, so Denny, as I said, um, connects his account of dreaming to a physical account of consciousness. Now, the idea, and one of the things he points out, which I think is quite interesting, is that the idea of an unrecalled dream is problematic because it can't be tested as an experience. It can be tested from a sleep researcher looking at, say, EEG or rapid eye movement, but not by the person who can't recall it. So if it's an unrecalled experience or unrecalled dream, is it really an experience at all? Now, my view on this is that it's connected to the relationship between states of consciousness and reality. Wakefulness is one kind of relationship with reality, which, for example, involves linear time and a close temporal connection between events, experience and the will. Dreaming, sleep, involves a different relationship. There's a connection between the events experienced as linear by wakefulness and the mind, but of a different kind. I don't consider dreaming and wakefulness to be different degrees of accuracy or relationship with the universe. In other words, I don't think reality and wakefulness <clears throat> is, I don't think wakefulness is more realistic than dreaming is. It's just a different relationship. And of course, in psychosis, the two can become mixed together as well. Research done while awake on a dreamer is merely wakeful consciousness and on one, uh, one's own dreams while awake is the same. What would dream research look like if it was dream research on wakefulness, in other words, while you're dreaming, you research into your wakeful state, what would that look like? Is it possible? So I see there as being about five or six states of consciousness at least, none of which have any priority over the others. And they, really, they re represent different relationships with phenomena. The kind of relationship that you have with phenomena during dreams, or rather the dreaming relationship that you have with phenomena is different than the wakeful relationship with phenomena. Lucid dreaming could be seen as a whole new state, uh, so it doesn't affect whether dreams are experiences or not. But if that were the case, it would seem to have been invented solely for that purpose. But it is possible, I think, that wakeful, not wakeful consciousness, that lucid dreaming is actually not dreaming sleep. It could be something else, like perhaps Gunsfeld. So we wake up with memories of dreams, but did we experience them? I think maybe we did experience them because when sleep paralysis fails, you get things like sleepwalking and talking in your sleep, that kind of thing. And those seem to be in keeping. They seem to keep pace. So I would say dreams are experiences, but that experience is not necessarily the same as wakeful experience. And the way it's represented in wakeful experience is different. OK, so if you like this video, please rate, comment, share and subscribe. If you dislike it, tell me why so I can improve. And I'll see you tomorrow.